start painting. Hello heroes, welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. I'm your host Dallas Kemp and welcome to the show. We are going to be painting up our Magneto, which we started last week, last Thursday, 1 p.m. Pacific Center Time, our normal, our normal time. Um, of course, I'm doing a alternate scheme. We found um, X-Men Blue uh, scheme. Uh, it's got a, it's a black costume with red trim. Um, and I found a, a piece of art that had like a blue halo around him. So I'm trying to like uh, recreate that blue halo and we'll be adding more blue to the glow from his hand. I want to show like some of that magnetism and stuff like that. So uh, I did, um, after last week's show, I did go ahead and uh, uh, paint in some red trim just to speed us along because we're going to hopefully hit the glow this week. And... Um, so we'll be shading the red and highlighting the red, but I went ahead and put in some of that red and tightened up the blue just, or the black, just a little bit. So looks like everybody's joined in. Looks like everybody's talking about the X-Men. I see some lockjaw conversations. I might have, might have a lockjaw right here. Um, so if you have any questions, get ready to ask them because I'm about to paint. Let's do this. Switch it over to the mini. There's Magneto. All right, like I said, I went ahead and tightened up our blacks and threw some red trim on. And I want to go ahead and get a base layer of red. I'm just going to grab a couple paintbrushes here. Looks about like a one and two. So I want to utilize my Zenith uh, Prime on the cape. It's a great big surface, which I really love big surfaces. Um, big fan of big open areas for painting. Uh, really lets you as a painter get in there and do some fun stuff. Um, when an area is not, you know, cluttery or busy. So it really lets you get in there and uh, practice some smooth transitions or just just simple base coat and wash techniques plus just as a you know from an artistic standpoint you know all canvases need a area for the eye to rest um, so like these big capes and superheroes are really good about that right you got this nice smooth areas Typically, you know, there are some, you can, everybody can point to examples. Uh, but typically you have these nice big areas. But these capes and stuff really add that moment where the eye can rest. I actually think a lot of, uh, about this kind of stuff a lot. Even when we're talking about uh, like a wave, like what we release in a month, I like to think about areas of rest in a box. So like two characters together. Um, sometimes I make, sometimes we make one more dramatic or more over the top and then we let the other one be the area of rest. Or when we're doing the wave uh, we might kind of let kind of choose somebody if it's appropriate with the character to kind of be the area of rest as well, right? If everybody was Magneto, you wouldn't have any contrast to like some of the more stoic poses. So having that nice mix is really good. It tells more story across the line.
You know, it's just an interesting thing that we think about. Oh, thanks. That's, thanks. Uh, what is that? that? Thanks, Gamers Web. I like this color scheme, too. Actually, I, I had not seen it, um, and Schick found it for me, uh, pointed me in this direction while we were kind of digging around looking for ideas for me to play with on stream. Um, and I just kind of kind of dug it and was just like, okay, that's, that's really neat. I'm excited to do He's got Magenta Glow. So I'm really excited to get to Magenta Glow today. So I'm going to put a little, so I just used uh, some red, some nice uh, non-primary, more like a brick red to uh, do all of his red trim. I'm going to use like a sanguine color to kind of gently shade it. Still using the worst brush in the world, because why wouldn't I? Someday I'll replace it. I'm very lazy. Venom is a lot of fun to paint. Um, I agree with you, Annie. Uh, Venom is a lot of fun to paint. I kind of want to do another one. Uh, my Venom was done with a very a lot of purple undertones. I kind of want to do something a little more classic. Um, you know, I'm very much a, I really enjoy painting like more, well, less measures. I'm not, I don't want to, I like painting like a small amount of measures for a game. Um, lets me focus on characters and things like Venom, right? It's like it's it's or or your favorite character, like Wolverine. I could definitely see myself painting like three of those, um, and then playing them based on kind of how I feel. Or um, I am working on. I don't think I'm quite ready to show it off. I am working on like an alt scheme squad. I don't think I'm quite ready to show it off. If Josh or Schick tried to convince me, I probably wouldn't fight too hard, but I don't think I'm quite ready to show those off. Maybe. Now we're gonna put a little blue in with the sanguine. Why don't you just hold your blue? I'm gonna shade that red one more time. While the cloak is drying, we'll do that. I think Josh just said not yet. I, I hope Josh remembers what I'm talking about. I think Josh remembers what I'm talking about. But Crisis Protocol is such a great, you know, so many neat characters in the Marvel Universe. And as we said, um, Shik has said many times, I've said many times, like ultimate dream would be to get to everybody. Um, you know, everybody should get their favorite characters because that's really cool. But like, I do like painting like multiples of the same character because you can just really get in there and try something different and unique sometimes. Maybe you feel like you didn't do as good as you could. I know a lot of people say strip the mentor. I'm not a fan of that. I like having, I like having like a good watermark of my path. So I keep, 
and stuff. You know, I got like 40 year old miniatures that I'm like, those are really bad. But I keep them because I like to show, show where I've come from, what I've learned. Some people might find it easier to paint the cape off. It's really preference. I'm a, I'm not into that. How many, uh, what number, of how many measures have we released? It's been quite a few. Schick said it the other day. I don't know. Maybe I should take a picture of my collection. Share it. Just have to make sure there's no spoilers or Josh will get me. So it's just a little blue and red mixed together. This red's not quite dry, that's all right. We'll just like let those blend together a little bit. Yeah, it's a lot of miniatures. We made a lot of miniatures in a year. Um, we're very proud of what we've done. Um, you know, we've learned a lot and we keep pressing and pushing and growing ourselves, um, which is definitely like a studio, like mantra. Um, we're very collaborative. Uh, we believe like nothing can be done by one person. Um, everybody has input. Um, when we talk about the mentors and we talk about the rules, everybody Gets, a, gets input and we definitely work together as a team. It's the way we believe. It's the way we believe success can be achieved. It's the only way success can be achieved. And that goes to even, um, you know, learning how to do stuff, you know, like as we try new things, right? Like um, if, you, if you've been watching the streams, uh, we talked about Hella before and how, you know, the first, you know, when we first started working on Hella, we were like, holy cow, can we actually do this, right? And, you know, learning learning the, the material, working with our partners and figuring out what they can do with the material. And then that led to things like Storm, and then Storm's lessons led to things that hey, you haven't seen yet. Well, Crystal, I think Crystal's a great example. Um, you know, you can't really see it in the picture that we showed, but I'm gonna show her. I have, I have a crystal here, if y'all don't mind. Without the water attached, I teased the water last week so the wire's not attached to anything at all. So it's really learning how to play with the plastic to do this fun stuff. We have like absolute negative space, right? You know, what we can get away with, with the material. You know, even things like uh, Magneto here, right? We've learned we learn the lessons and then we apply it to the next set of mentors and we keep pushing and growing. So we think it's been a lot of fun and
we hope you guys are having fun too. Because we're, 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 we're on a grand adventure. We're on a grand adventure. Uh, there is not an alternate head for Crystal. Yeah, we're super, super proud of this. Super excited to try this out. There's not an alternate head. We went with a more modern look. Um, you can recognize her by her costume and definitely her powers. Um, I love these. I love these characters that have like these ridiculous physical powers that we can really bring into the miniature form, right? Got a little watermark there. A little spot build up. So sorry, if you're looking forward to an alternate head, Crystal's not getting one. I, I apologize profusely. Have we considered adding half points? No, we have not considered adding half points. At least not that I'm aware of. I don't know, maybe Pagani is talking about it by himself. Dark holds your blue mixed with some red. Thank you, African Nada. Uh, we don't talk about future releases. Makes me nuts when people ask, but how are you thinking about the balance between getting all, to all the characters in the vast Marvel Universe versus revisiting some characters? Mm, I think that would be more of a shit question. Um, but I think there's a way to do it. There's always a way to do it. There's always a way to... You also got to remember, like, we view many characters as snippets in time. You know, we talk about Spider-Man from the core box. You also got to remember that's a core box. Um, so complexity should be fairly low. But, you know, we, we view that as a very young Spider-Man, you know. It's not a matter of power. It's also just a matter of place and, and story and what you love, right? Like, some, like you know, you might have a two-point version or a three-point version of a character and a, let's say, a five- or six-point version of a character. That doesn't mean the five- or six-point version is necessarily better. That just means that that's that version. And maybe I want to take, or maybe sometimes you want to take the three-point version to fill a role, you know? 
to tell a story or to, to, to be the cool version you want. You know, they don't all need to be. a certain thing. You know, if they fill the role, then they fill the role. And sometimes, you know, you might have two characters that fill the same role, and that's there's nothing wrong with that either. That, that gives me a choice. You know, like maybe maybe sometimes I want to play a certain squad, and now I can pick the character that fits that for me instead of a character that needs to fill a role. So I just pick the one. Yeah, different rarities of the same character. It's all about roster building. It's all about it's all about your roster, right? Like I mean heck, I'm probably gonna put Wolverine in everything for a long time because I love Wolverine, right? And it's also, yeah, Zorgnak uh Zorgonak actually makes with it's all uh heroes and villains are always as strong as the story needs them to be. Um or um Shik has pointed out like like a, a character in a solo series is always more depicted as more powerful than in a um, a group series, right? Because then they outshine, right? You know, Hulk always wins until he doesn't. But if we made a game where Hulk always wins, then that's not really a game anymore, is it? Like, what's the point of that game? Keep adding some red. I love this cape. Exactly, like World War Hulk is like ridiculous, god level powerful, right? So if we made that exactly as you imagine, then you would just take that and nobody would do anything and it wouldn't be a game. Yeah, very boring short games. Um, Greg, I just so Shake has been trying to get me. To read Immortal Hulk for I don't know a couple of years now, uh, and it took me a while to get to it. I finally picked up the first trade and read it, and it was really really great. Um, I really like it. It's it's uh, it's a lot of what I kind of like in writing. I like uh, I like a more philosophical like get to the root of like what it means to be, you know. I'm going to use the word human, but in reality, even though it's not necessarily that, it is. Um, I, I love those kind of stories. So Shik was just like, you got to read Immortal Hawk. You got to read Immortal Hawk. So I finally picked up first trade. I uh, loved it. I need to grab the next trade. Uh, average game length, uh, 
typically 45 minutes to an hour for me. I'm probably, probably not the best. Hour and a half. Depends. I like to jaw a lot when I'm playing though. Let's grab a little pink. Just a little pink. Might be a little too pink. Turn that down just a touch, just a touch. Doing a little bit of highlighting on the red. This guy's not perfect. I'm not painting it for a studio. This is mine. If it was a studio paint job, I probably wouldn't be doing it on stream. Need my headphones on for that. Cape, super ridiculous. Uh, one Mr. Dave Kidd sculpted this. You might recognize if you read the credits. Of Marvel Crisis Protocol. We really had a lot of fun, like working this cape. I like these big dramatic capes. Vex says Hulk is their most favorite fictional character. Yeah, Hulk is pretty rad. Not really neat stories you can tell with him, I think. This is deep shadow. I'm going to throw a highlight line on the bottom edge of that cape. Kind of frames the miniature. Uh, Vin32, have we seen my... Uh, yes, yeah, some of my studio paint miniatures. Um, I've painted... Um, Three. I've done some terrain, uh, but I painted the Hella, and I got two more coming up that you will see very, very soon that I painted. Um, I think everything else you've seen has been done by Brendan. 
we might have a couple others coming up painted by somebody else uh, but I've done three I've only done three but it's, it's not actually my job to paint studio miniatures but every now and then I do I mean, I'd show one right now, but Josh would kill me. Josh can reach me. Uh, Greg, typically by choice. Speaking of filling needs, you people may have seen that we posted for um, digital engineer positions. So if any of you know a digital engineer, I would love to get to know them. What criteria do y'all use for deciding which characters from the comics? Uh, I mean, we've said before, everybody, we would love to do on a, every character. So this costume has some cool glowy bits. Now it's red against magenta, which is going to be a little tricky to pull off. I don't know what a digital train engineer is. Like you move trains digitally. Yeah, well, on a, on a long enough timeline, maybe we'll make 900 Spider-Man. I know I won't complain. I love Spider-Man. Oh, train simulators. Yeah, we're just looking for somebody to get in there and learn how to make miniatures with us. It's a little messy. It's okay. Part of the fun of painting is making a mess and cleaning it up. All right, I did paint the face very simply. Um, I just kind of picked a skin tone did a wash, add a little gray, uh, put the gray around the, 
the chin to kind of showcase a little stubble. I'm going to use the same pink. My brush is pretty rough. Typically I flip upside down to paint the right eye. The big thing is breathe, don't hold your breath. A lot of, I hear people say all the time they hold their breath. When they do the details like like uh, eyes, I I don't personally not a not a proponent of the breath holding. I think you should do the opposite. I think you should take a deep breath, calm yourself, and then breathe out when you uh, when you kind of go and take the take the brush in. Let's take a little ink. It's a little turquoise ink. Magenta. I got a little magenta out on my paint palette. Y'all want to see a size comparison of Block Jaw? I know we're painting X Men, but those Inhumans are coming up. Got a little magenta out. Somebody said yes. There he is. It's pretty gigantic. Pretty gigantic. Yeah, he's quite huge. He's on a 50 millimeter base. So just a little bit of a magenta paint and I thin it down. This is just going right over that pink that I used to establish where I want the glow. I'm really wanting it to like focus in the corners and recesses.
like these light glows I like to build up a little bit no need in rushing them Grabbing a drink, grabbing a drink. Uh, Fabu Pandu. Well, what was this scheme based off of? Uh, it's from X Men Blue. Um, we were talking about like different color schemes to do for the paint streams. Um, Schick did the alternate white costume, um, which was awesome looking. Super cool, and it was kind of fun because uh, normally I get volunteered for white. He did white, um, but that means I need to find something, and um, we were we were all looking for different options. And uh, Schick sent this to me from X Men Blue, and I was just like, "Yep, that's the one I want." So thought it was very neat looking. Just throw some metal on. Might thin that down a little too much, didn't it? Sorry. Yeah, the white costume is very cool. I mean, there's no reason to not do two if you're really inspired. Um, I definitely have three costumes I want to do for Wolverine. Um, I might even have a diorama I'm kind of planning. For Wolverine, so like, you know, sometimes you just want to take different different costumes, you know? It goes, it goes back to that, like, characters, right? You know, a three point, a three-point Spider-Man and five-point Spider-Man do not negate each other and make one better than the other. It means you have an option now. Um, they fill different roles, maybe. So, something like, you know, I look at paint schemes the same way, personally. You know, I build a lot around theme when I play. Um, I build a lot around my story and just having a good time with the people I'm playing with. So sometimes I just need a different color scheme to make the story cooler for the other, my opponent and me. Yeah, the one I did uh, on the stream was the yellow and brown. I really like that costume. Uh, it was a lot of fun, like, interpreting it onto the miniature, so that was really neat. But I definitely want to do the yellow and gold, or blue and gold, um, at some point, and I probably want to do a black and white at some point. Like I said, they'll each fill different roles for the games I play. base work oh I don't know we can see where we can get with the base got a couple random doodads here throw a little silver on them let's make that concrete let's make this silver it's got a lot of I beams and cables and stuff going on To 
depends on time. Well, we might get some base work done. Yeah, just pick a couple of things and make them silver. Oh, if this dries, we can uh, definitely throw some colors on the base. Fan de poo. So I'm taking a lot of care in this uh, miniature. Normally I paint something up in an hour on stream. This has been two hours. He's getting really close. But just being more precise. Also the cape is more dramatic. So kind of like taking my time and I want to like really make sure I'm blending well. Uh, but not getting too crazy with it. We're going to let that stuff on the base dry before we do anything else there. Let's do a few more highlights. A lot of Thanos fighting going on in the chat. All right, how I paint my bases. So I did. I think I did a video on this. So this is a light, light gray green. going to treat this all as like the rubble because you got to have rubble there's a crisis going on after all This is just right over the zip. 
which was black and then I hit pretty heavy with the light gray I don't care if this gets on the silver metal tends to lose its metalosity in the shadows so by hitting it on the silver it doesn't really matter just maybe that's where light's not directly hitting the metal. Now we really want that to dry now. While we're waiting, take a little of our pink and magenta, mix it together. like so I'm trying to not touch the edges where the magenta is concentrated we're closing in on our hour so I'd be remiss to not remind you that this month's painting protocol is blue and gold. So we want to see your blue and gold miniatures. Uh, last month's was spooky. And we will be showing off our staff picks of those very soon. Very excited. But if you want your miniature to be featured on the stream, paint up something blue and gold, share it over on Instagram, hashtag painting protocol. And maybe you'll be featured here on Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. It's a lot of fun. It's really cool seeing everybody's cool painted miniatures. You know, we put a lot of love and a lot of heart into it. So, seeing what all y'all come up with just brings, brings us a bunch of joy. seen some really interesting and cool paint jobs and conversions so it's a lot really really neat to the base take a little black mix it into that gray green I'm gonna just choose a couple places this is still wet don't care so usually I focus a dark color here in the crevices near uh, near the rubble to kind of show like maybe some shadow it also allows you to kind of divide the elements a bit let me use a second brush to kind of stretch that out especially like back here let's let's really stretch that out
you know, if we darken this area on that side of him, it kind of pushes that to the back, brings the character forward, which is important. And just less so on this side. I can just use this for the metallic areas as well. And we only got a few minutes left. I don't think this is going to be dry enough for the dry brush. Yeah, just let that wet blend together. It's great. Like, I, I like using a lot of techniques. I don't think there's any one technique that's superior to any other. Um, you know, as a painter, having more techniques in the toolbox is always good because um, it lets you play around and try new stuff. It also lets you create variety, which is important. And you just kind of find what works best for you. Um, you know, I, I use two brush blending a lot. It works really well for me. It's not for everybody. Um, it has its strengths, you know? So if you can't get to work, it has a lot of interesting positives that, um, you know, if you can unlock, you can, you can tap in. The big thing being speed. But any, you know, that's, that's, but that doesn't mean it's the only technique. Dry brushing, washing, stippling, Loaded brush, layering, they're all viable. Uh, when I try to apply dark color and spread it with another brush, it tends to not move. It dries fast. Am I using, I am using wet palette, but do I need to add a slow dry to my paint or is my paint just not thin enough? Also, do you have water in your off brush or is it just wet? Uh, there's no water in the off brush. It's damp. Um, honestly, your paint is probably, if it's drying too fast, it's probably too thin. Um, when I'm two brush blending, a lot of time, that's, that's just straight paint. There's no, it's not thinned um, when I'm two brushing. If I'm, if I'm really, really, really using traditional two brush blending techniques, I am not thinning the paint. I might add just a touch of water to loosen it because no matter what paint line, let's switch it over here so it looks more interesting. Um, no matter what the paint line is, like two bottles of the same paint line or two bottles of the same color, age changes the thickness. Um, so when people say, how thin do you make your paint? Like how much water should I add? There's no real ratio. It's, it's, there's no real ratio. Also, I live in a rainforest. You might live in a desert. So there's no ratio. Um, it's, learning, it's learning to use the consistency and playing with the consistency. Um, for two brush blending, I actually don't thin the paint. Um, I might pull it out into like a, like a little palette, like let's, something like this. And that's just a little, little bit touch of water just to loosen it up. Because that lets that paint go in there thick and be pulled out. Same way with wet blending. When you're wet blending two colors together, which um, wet blending um, we might do uh, when we go to paint log jaw. I might show that. You put two colors next to each other and you kind of like let them mash together uh, to create a bunch of variation. Um, you actually don't want that wet. You don't want that thinned out. Uh, you want like nice thick paint to work with you. Um, so it, it all depends on technique. Um, you can do, I, I, my wet palette is, remember a lot of people put too much water. There's no water 
wishing about in this wet palette. It's damp. It's just the, the, the sponge is just saturated. And um, I put the paper back on and I dry the top. And then that keeps the paint wet, not thinned. Um, so, because you can always thin paint, you can't thick paint. Does that make sense? Um, so, me personally, I'd rather have the thickest paint I can get. I like a thick paint. I don't, um, um, like, the, the thicker the paint, the better for me because that gives me more options. If I have a very thin paint, I have no options because I can't make it thicker. If I have a very thick paint, I have a lot more options available to me because I can always add water or add a mixing medium or add a thinner and I can get more out of the paint. I can do more things. I can try more things. And for certain techniques, you do want that thick paint. Dry brush. When you're dry brushing, you want a nice thick paint. You want to get it almost all the way off and then you just barely, barely, barely hit. You always go one direction. When you're two brush blending, you almost want, almost always, but not always, you want a thicker paint. Um, I will paint with thin paint sometimes. So it's, it's a matter of learning it and being very quick. Um, learning to switch the two brushes is a big trick. So like when you're painting, like learning to do, Like getting that process down is very important. Um, just getting that hand always moving and getting in your brain on how to, so you're not flopping your paint or your brushes everywhere. So hopefully that a very long-winded way to answer your question there. Um, I, I think your paint might be a little thin. It's, it's much easier to tell if I saw it in person and watched you painting than just translating what you're telling me. But almost obviously, if it's drying too fast, you're probably thinning it a little too much. Um, like let's take a look at my wet palette even. So there's my wet palette. Like this paint is actually pretty thick. It's not really thin at all. If you can see that. It's not running anywhere. You don't, you don't want, um, there are techniques you want really thin paint. Glazes, um, like a lot of times no, no, you don't want it super thin. No, no, you don't want it super thin. Um, like when I'm doing glazes or if I'm doing like a really sloppy kind of blending, um, I'll thin the paint more, but like a really good two brush blend, you want like a nice thick paint. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start packing up. So if you have any more questions, let me know. Remember, check us out on da 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 Atomic Mass Transmissions at uh, Instagram. Uh, check us out there and make sure to hashtag painting protocol um, your miniatures every month. Remember this month is uh, blue and gold. We want to see your blue and gold. It can be any miniature, you know. I mean, heck, pick anything and make it blue and gold to go into your uh, X-Men roster. We want to see what it looks like. Last month's was spooky. We're going to show those spookies really, really soon. Check us out on Twitter and Facebook for all the latest news information and spoilers from Josh. Um, Cause you never know what he'll be showing off. Um, whoops! Um, never know what he'll be showing off. You know, we just saw, just saw this crystal. Who I think is super cool. We saw Medusa, which is super cool, and that boy Lockjaw. So. Those will be coming up. Remember, join us next week at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Same channel for Mr. Will Schick. He'll be painting up some cool stuff. Uh, then, wait, are we on next Thursday? Are we on next week? We'll talk about it later. So until then, we'll catch you later. And remember, everybody can be a hero. See you guys. We're off next week. You can't watch us next week because we're taking a week off to do some stuff next week. Dun 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 Got stuff to do next week Lots of hair on Medusa But we'll be back later To do more painting for you Bounce